This is the Truth Network. Coming to you from an entrenched barricade deep in the heart of Central North Carolina. Masculine Journey After Hours, a time to go deeper and be more transparent on the topic covered on this week's broadcast. So sit back and join us on this adventure. The Masculine Journey After Hours starts here now. Welcome to Masculine Journey After Hours. And if you didn't join us for the, the previous podcast, we talked about a man's role in the current situation with COVID-19 and the role in the family, the role in uh, with social media, whatever that might be. We just ask all of our members that are on the show with us today, two of us in studio, four on the phone, you know, what they would say the role is. And so we're going to continue in the after hours and be a little bit more transparent, not that we weren't before, but go a little deeper into what makes this so hard and then also what are some of the blessings that we're finding in it. And so we want to go ahead and probably go to a clip of what can make it seem to be so hard. And this is from the movie Groundhog Day. I actually watched it this last weekend, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, Groundhog Day, this is when Bill Murray, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't know why you haven't seen it. It's really, really old. But Bill Murray wakes up every day, and it's Groundhog Day. He's in Puxatawney to do a, a broadcast. He's a, a weatherman. He's broadcasting about the, the uh, groundhog. And so he wakes up the next day, and it's Groundhog Day again, and it is again and again and again. This is the second day that he wakes up. And Groundhog Day happens again, and he's not expecting it. I got you, Dave. Okay, campers, rise and shine, and don't forget your booties, because it's cold out there. Today. It's cold out there every day. What is this, Miami Beach? Not I don't hardly. So. How's it going, boys? You're playing yesterday's tape. Well, that blizzard thing. Oh, that blizzard thing. That blizzard thing. Oh, well, here's the report. The National Weather Service is calling for a... Big blizzard thing. Yes, yeah. they are. But you know, there's another reason why today is especially exciting. Especially cold. Especially cold. Yeah. Okay. But the big question on everybody's lips. Yeah, they're chap, chap lips. Yeah, they're chap lips. Chap right. Lips. Do you think Phil's gonna come out and see a shadow? Punks a Tony Phil. That's right, Woodchuck Chuckers. It's Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. Get up and check that hog out there. Yeah. Ooh-wee, ooh-wee. Come here, Groundhog. Morning. Uh, see the groundhog? Yeah. I think it'll be an early spring. Didn't we do this yesterday? I don't know what you mean. No. Ah! Don't mess with me, poor chop. <sighs> what day is this? It's February 2nd. Groundhog Day. Yeah. Sorry. You know, I thought it was yesterday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sleep well, Mr. Connors? Did I sleep well? Would you like some coffee? Yes, please. I think I'll have a double. I hope you enjoy the festivities. There's talk of a blizzard. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. No, that's OK. Thank you. Will you be checking out today, Mr. Connors? I'd say the chance of departure is 80%. 75, 80. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where's everybody going? To Gobbler's Knob. It's Groundhog Day. It's still just once a year, isn't it? So, Robbie, I left that last part in because it's like hearing him say gobbler's knob. I think it's a funny, <laughs> funny description. But uh, you know, I, let's not go there. Yeah, no, and I do. I do like uh, even after hours. <laughs> after hours, you can't go there. But no, I just thought it was a unique description of the, the place where Pucks Train Phil's from. The uh, but then you know Bill Murray says this is just once a year because isn't that how it feels some days? You know, especially if if you're at home and you're working from home. Or maybe you're in a position where you're not necessarily working right now and you're just home every day. And so you wake up and you're not even sure what day of the week it is. You know, you know it's not Groundhog Day, but it could be Tuesday or it could be Thursday. You don't really know. Unless your favorite show's on TV, I guess. That might be the way you could tell. I, I'll tell you what. You know, I I guess I'm fortunate in that this is, con, you know, considered a, you know, an occupation that is, you know, needed in the media so that I get to come to work every day. But we had a case of Corona come in the studio. We had to shut down for a few days. 
and, and I did work out at my house. And I was, it was remarkable how much it's like Groundhog Day. Like, oh my goodness. B- because before, if you had a day off, you had all sorts of different places you could go and do mm-hmm. and whatever. But now you're waking up and you're facing the same thing. And it's like, wow, I, you know, it, it's, it's very much there. And it's struggles that really, I never would have it, thought that I would be struggling with. But they're there. They are. Uh, Harold, I wanted to ask you, you know, you're, you're in a position now, you're retired, but you had a lot that you were doing on a daily basis. It's got to really feel a lot like Groundhog's Day for you. Well, well, one of the things that I thought of when Robbie was saying that is a few years ago, I was in a doctor's office and an elderly gentleman, I wasn't so old back then, walked in and walked up to the receptionist and I heard her say, well, sir, your appointment is next week. And the old gentleman turned around and shuffling out, and he said, that's the trouble of being retired. No weekends, holidays, or vacation. (laughs) And I laughed and laughed and laughed at that. Then I got retired, and guess what? No weekends, holidays, or vacation. The only day that's really different is Sunday. Thank goodness for that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, we haven't been able to go to the Y and play pickleball, and uh, so it, even though being retired, uh, it it is different. Yeah, it is. The well, what what's the something right now that you would say that you're struggling with? Uh, I'm really missing being with people. Uh, it, it's I mean I would love to be there at the studio with you guys. Uh, Jim had said earlier about Tuesday night is sort of a highlight, and, and I agree uh, that that's something I look forward to each week, uh, whether I want to talk on that particular program or not. I want to be there because um, it, it's just different. I mean, I love hearing the voices, but it's it's different not being able to see the faces and so forth. So I'm I'm really looking forward to when this thing is over and we can get back together and have our boot camp and our Tuesday night sessions. Uh, and yeah. I miss being able to see my folks at church. Yeah, that is hard. I know that uh, you know we do the radio show each each time we're together, and it is a, a big part of what brings us together. But I would say, you know, for each one of us, it's probably the time we get to spend talking about life together that that makes it different. You know, I, I'm not downplaying the show at all. I love doing the show with you guys. I love being a part of the show with you guys. Um, but it's it's living life with you guys, which really makes the difference. And it's hard because we don't get a great opportunity to do that right now, like many other people, you know, just through text. Right. Through, um, the good thing about text, if somebody goes on a tirade, you can ignore it. <laughs> but other than that, you know, it's it's hard. You know, it's it's hard not being with your friends. It's hard not being with your family. And I understand that. Right. One of the things that doesn't come across is uh, people don't realize the time that we have before recording and after recording. So what we talk about on air is only a part of our Tuesday night. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... uh, Which feels like Saturday morning to most people listening to the podcast. (laughs) Unless they're picking it up on podcasts, it could feel like a Wednesday at three. Yeah, it could. You know, good point, it, Harold. It could be Tuesday night. It could be. So, Harold, we'll come back to you here in just a second. I want to go over to uh, Andy. Um, Andy, what would you say is, is a struggle for you right now in this current situation, something that makes it harder for you? Uh, being away, <clears throat> away from family, um, you know, a lot of you guys know my family's down in Winston-Salem Mary and every Tuesday night. Go by and see my mom, see my daughter. Um missing that and then not being able to celebrate Easter was pretty difficult. I guess the other thing too though would be at first this was a great blessing. You guys know I travel quite a bit. I talk about it on the radio show. I had three trips at the beginning of the year and I was like man I can't keep up this pace. I do a lot of local travel to do sales in North Carolina but I had I went to New Orleans and then I went to California and went to Yosemite and then I went to Utah and some of the national parks there and I was enjoying that but I was almost getting burnt out on travel and there was things I needed to get home done at home and so when I got grounded it was kind of nice oh let's catch up well I've been into that about a month now 
and things are starting to come together and I get get some things done. But I'm used to going and seeing my customers and the relationships I have with them. It's been difficult to not being able to do that. But then to echo what Harold was saying, you know, Tuesday night is a special time for, I think, all of us. It is our community. I probably have more community with you guys than I do with the actual people that, that I go to church with, just being kind of new to Boone up here. So that's very difficult uh, just to, to, to where a place that you got, you, you get your, you know, a, a common understanding with the same, same worldview, same biblical view, and what we've all kind of experienced in masculine journey to just kind of be, we're still involved, we still stay in contact with one another, but there's something about being face-to-face with one another and sharing each other's uh, life together, as, as Harold said, that's that's difficult for me. Uh, and as a group, we're about as different as different can be. <laughs> I mean, honestly. A little bit. I mean, we yeah. come from different religious backgrounds, I mean, Christian backgrounds, yeah. but different denominational backgrounds, mm-hmm. right? Um we, we come from different belief systems, different family structures, all those kinds of things. But yet, you know, there's a common bond here. And I think that it's that diversity that makes us all learn and grow from one another, which makes right. it pretty cool. Well, thanks, Andy. We'll come back to you. I'm going to move on yeah. to, to Darren. Darren, what would you say is a struggle right now for you in the midst of, of what's going on? Well, I'm not killing a 15-year-old. Uh, I mean, that's... <laughs> No, he he's been really good actually, but we do have a fifteen year old that lives in the house and uh you know, I'll just uh you guys know I'm a little bit of a rebel and, and uh I like my freedom and, and I'm and I've raised Carson that way as well and so, you know, when he says, Hey dad, uh, you know, I'm gonna go ride my motorcycle and ride it over to our property and uh uh and then I get a call from a policeman, did you know that you know, Carson's out riding a motorcycle. Um, yes, sir. I sent him there to get him out of the house. Well, he shouldn't be out, you know, right now. I mean, this coronavirus, I'm thinking, you're an idiot. You don't have teenagers, do you? Yeah, um, he's not and, six foot near anybody. <laughs> right. I mean, he's out in the middle of 150 acres riding his motorcycle. And so, anyway, all of those types of things, the struggle is not just thinking the whole world is a bunch of idiots, you know? And uh, that sort of thing. Are are we going to a break? Yeah, I don't know what we're going to right now. We're going to what sounds like a break, but it won't actually feel like a break. (laughs) Because we like the music so much that we occasionally like to play it. Yeah. You know, so just to give you that feel. I love Keith Medley and his music as well. You know, that's if any of you guys are listening, you want to go to Keith, Med- Keith Medley, Keith Medley Music on Facebook. That's where our music comes from. Keith is gracious enough to let us use it, and he's a phenomenal uh, guitar maker or luthier if you are uh, musically inclined. But, yeah, the struggle for me is not just trying to kill somebody right now, <laughs> you know, because we're all kind of on edge, and like you guys said, we're not around each other enough to kind of coach each other back off the edge of the cliff right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, things like that. And so just, you know, just trying to be nice, you know, and trying to be Jesus in the world right now is a little bit of a struggle. And I, you know, I hope that's not too honest for people, but, um, but honestly, that's the reality. Uh, you know, I love the clip that we used on the show that, you know, do you want to stay home with your wife and kids or do you want to choose B, which is B. You know, I mean, it's, and so it's not just, it's not my family, honestly. I, I'm having a wonderful time with Sheila and Carson and, and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, the whole world is losing their minds and, and it's on both sides of, you know, it's, well, everybody needs to stay at home. Everybody needs to, well, the government's trying to, you know, put us into prison camps or whatever. I mean, people are losing their minds on both sides. Yeah. And, you know, you just want to go, shut up! I mean, but but at the same time, they're scared, they're, they're worried, they're frustrated, so how would Jesus deal with them? And so the struggle for me is being Jesus, yeah. honestly. Well, thanks, Darren. We're going to go to Jim real quick so we can get back on some of the blessings here in a second. Jim, so what's the biggest struggle you're having right now? Not getting hugs. <laughs> that can be tough. You know, it really was kind of funny today because uh, a guy that 
is uh, he's a deacon at our church. Written was renting a property. He's moving from one rental property out to another one, and he was thanking me, and he just tugged me today, and I tugged it back, and I realized, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> and uh, it, often the little things bother me much more than the big things, and it just hit me that. No, I, I still like doing that. And for all of you that are gasping and are terrified, that and I am, I'm a multi-risk candidate at over 65 and diabetic, so I may die, but I, I will die, and I just don't worry about that sort of thing. And like I told guys during the break, I booked a cruise next year, and I'm expecting to make it, and if I don't, you know, my kids can get the money back. It's not a big deal. But I, the the fearful things really to me are I'm an extrovert and I'm stuck at home with an extreme introvert and I am actually enjoying her enjoying this not being able to go out. <laughs> but at times, and I get a little stir crazy and like there, and I'm working on a house to get it ready to sell, not to move into, and. Uh, it's just, you know, things are different, but as you pointed out earlier, things are always different. They change. And they do. If you're not, not ready for change, then you're going to be disappointed a lot. Well, thanks, Jim. Let me ask Robbie the question, and I'll answer it, then we'll go to blessings real quick. And uh, yeah, I'm sure people are <laughs> like, oh, oh, man, this is kind of like yeah. Debbie Downer ourselves, you know? But, yeah. You know, the thing that, it, you know, it's going to just sound like, what a wimp, but I think probably a lot of people are with me that like, oh my goodness, any little thing that happens, like if I get, start to get a headache, do I have Corona? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I start to cough, like I woke up in the middle of the night, you know, with this little cough, which was probably pollen, you know, but I coughed two or three times. Satan jumps on it. Like, like this is it. You're going down. You know, me too. I'm 64 diabetic, all these things. And I, I cannot even believe how often my mind goes to, oh, did you just touch your face? Yeah. Did you just uh, touch that thing? Did you see that? You know, I wonder if I should eat at this restaurant. They probably handle the food more at this restaurant. The craziness of, yeah. of what is going through my mind. But by the same token, I don't want to be, you know, um, reckless. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Well, you saw you saw me wipe down a takeout bag with a Lysol wipe. <laughs> so, so you know, I, and I'm not typically that kind of guy. You know, for me, I got a couple struggles. One is I, I don't want to catch this. If I'm going to catch it, I'm probably going to catch it. You know, I, I don't want to catch it due to my own stupidity, right? You know, because I. I touched something and didn't think to wash my hands. I touched something and, you know, wasn't paying attention or, you know, I, I was being careless, so to speak. And so that, that's part of the struggle that I'm not really used to because normally I just don't really care that much. You know, I mean, I'm not really <laughs> yeah, that aware of it. And I would say that there's some level of it, uh, and especially the weeks that I don't have my boys with me because I have my boys one week and then I'm by myself the next week, I think I'm starting to lack some motivation. There's some projects and stuff I'd really like to get done around the house, and time's not the issue right now. <laughs> you know, it's more of a motivation, you know, and it's not really like there's something burning I want to watch on Netflix or something I got to see, but I find myself there a little scrolling through the list to see what's, you know, maybe something's going to jump out at me, you know? Yeah, medicating all over the place. Food? Yeah. Like, I can't seem to not medicate myself somehow because, you know... We're in the middle of this crisis. I need help. Yeah. I need chocolate right now. I got to have some chocolate. <laughs> Just a little bit. But I got to have some. Well, we go around the horn real quick and talk about some of the, the blessings that we're finding in the midst of it. Uh, and why don't we start backwards this time? Let's go with Jim. Jim, you're not going to be crazy. You get to go first. Ah. And you caught me by surprise. So I thought about the speaker. Oh, <laughs> good. Oh. Get off that. We know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I sort of indicated one of those. I am enjoying my wife, although she is 
a, watching all the stuff, and I, that gets a little old. But it really is just a nice change of pace. And I'm one of those weirdos that likes change instead of everything being the same. So it's it's been a, a blessing. And, and I've had more people to help talk through the stuff they're going through because there are people out there that are fearful. And, and being able to help in that respect, like I think while we've been on this call, I've got two calls that I'm pretty sure is somebody looking for a little support. So I'll be calling it back in a little bit. But, you know, helping others is always a big thing for me, and this is a new, different opportunity in that respect. Jim, are you finding that people are slipping into a lot more depression right now? Not as much. If it's depression, it's an agitated one. Okay. And, and it, yeah, in that respect, yes. But it's not a... It is more of a, I'm afraid, and talk me off the edge. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. We're going to move on to Darren. So, Darren, what are you finding to be some blessings during this time? Well, um, obviously, just being able to to, uh, experience how much I'm seeing some people really care for others. Um, the encouragement you see, maybe you know, maybe it's through social media, Facebook, whatever, um, phone calls. I'm, you know, I'm spending more time FaceTiming with my grandkids. Um, you know, I didn't get to see them all that much anyway, all the time. They, they don't live super far away, but, but you know, I, I didn't always see them. But oddly enough, they're at home. They're bored stiff. Let's call Paw Paw. You know what I mean? So... I get to spend more time on on FaceTime and stuff like that with them, and that's fun. But, um, you know, I have had the opportunity to – I'm building a house right now, and, and a couple of the guys that have been on my construction project, um, uh, one of them is just a, a pretty neat young man who is pretty much fatherless. And, you know, his grandfather raised him, but his grandfather died. And then his father, right after his grandfather died, said – you know, you got a week to get out of your grandfather's house. I'm selling it, you know, and um, and it doesn't have anything to do with him. And so he's a fatherless young man, but he's a good young man. And so, you know, I got to love on him and minister to him at the job site for several days and, and started a relationship that won't end anytime soon. And, you know, another young man that's one of the superintendents on my job, um, you know, he's, he's a young pastor and, uh, you know, we got to share some deep stuff and, and, uh, you know, and got to learn how to pray for each other and, and stuff. And then one of the blessings is, you know, I've had three or four funerals to go to during this time that I couldn't go to because the funerals aren't happening. And so I started developing this habit of writing what it would be that I would want to say to that person, writing the eulogy. What would I say if I were speaking at their funeral? And then publishing that on Facebook or, you know, on Instagram or whatever, and, and even starting some Facebook groups relating to that within my own family and stuff. And and encouraging people, hey, let's eulogize each other now. Let's not wait until people are dead. Let's start telling people now what they mean to us and how much we love them and and the cool things that we remember about them, the things we've learned from them. It's one of those things that I want to talk to you guys about when we're able to get back together, actually, and and make a practice of that. That'd be great. Well, Darren, thank you. We've got a few minutes left when we get to Andy and Harold. So thank you, Darren. We greatly appreciate it. We miss you, buddy. Yeah, we do. Love you guys. Love you. Andy, so what would you say are some blessings right now? Yeah. First of all, that was really good, but everybody, what they've said, it's caused me to think, you know, maybe I need to look at this thing a little bit different perspective and, and look for blessings, but what Darren said there was really good, and, and I feel like I've been pulled away. I mean, I was a sales guy that's going out and meeting customers, and, and I feel like I've had more of that role of being an encourager. I've been pulled back to just be by myself up here, and social media is about the only way, and I don't have a large... Uh, um, community up here that I am involved with. So, 
but I am doing the things that I feel like God's leading me. Like I say, I'm catching up and able to do things that I've been wanting to do around my house and stuff for some time, and I believe that's a gift right now because I never would have gotten to it the way my life was going. So it's a blessing for that. I've spent more time in the Word and in books that I've been wanting to read and caught up on that a little bit. You know, spending time with God, it's been a blessing. And I haven't bedged on Netflix the whole time. I mean, I'm, and if I do watch something, it's usually to learn or to edify, or I'll watch some of the movies built around masculine journey. So I'm just able to do things that I wasn't normally able to do just because of the, my hectic life style and the travel I do. So, you know, just um, those things right there, I think, have meant a lot, and I've enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Andy. We greatly appreciate it. We miss you, buddy. Harold, what about what about you? What would you say some blessings during this time? Uh, one of the things that uh, has been really good is the fact that uh, our preacher uh, is doing the stream on FaceTime each day. So we have a devotional period uh, at 1 o'clock every day where he, he does a lesson. And you can see the people that are signing on to, uh, to listen in. Uh, so... While we haven't been able to get together as a group uh, in a building, you know, and then see and touch and hug, uh, and I'm kind of like Jim, I'm, I'm a bit of a hugger, and I, I miss that. But we have been able to at least have some kind of communication via Facebook stream. Thank you, Harold. Robbie, real quick, what about you? Oh, getting to work on my sailboat and sail it. Awesome. For me, it's, I think, being realizing the things that I took for granted and now being so grateful for them, you know, and then also working on projects with my boys. I've really been able to get back out in the garage and do some projects with them, and it's just fun to work with your hands and do that with people you love. So looking forward to doing that this weekend when they're back with me. Go to masculinejourney.org to download previous podcasts, uh, eventually to register for an upcoming boot camp and to learn more about us or to reach out to us with questions. See you next week.